The Bastille was a French fortress completed in the late 1300s. Come on, peasant. There's nothing more rewarding than a hard day's work. My lord, why don't you join in? Ah! The gorm of the man to suggest it! A structure that showed the king's power and played an important role in France's internal conflicts throughout time. It was used as a prison by the king and became a symbol of oppression. I wouldn't want to find myself imprisoned in the Bastille. <laughs> if the Bastille was a book, we'd be looking at its final chapter. I'm Brian Pilchard and I love history. Using my skills in effects, clothes and disguises, I'm going to take you on a journey back in time for an adventure in Super History! 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 It's France, 1789, and it's not looking good. The country is ruled by King Louis XVI. Oh yes, it's a shame the poor people are starving. Is there any more chockey cake left? After funding efforts in the Seven Years' War and the American War of Independence, France is in a financial crisis. Also, please welcome our sponsor for this video, Milo's Melons! <laughs> so, a melon's all you do? Do you do other fruits? Mate, it says here, melons! Yeah, right. Well, we'll do our best to put it in the history. Oh, let them eat melon! <laughs> we'll try harder. To solve the problem, the Estates General is gathered together. The people are divided into three estates. The first, the clergy. The second, the nobility. And the third, everyone else. Now we need some more money. Who are we going to tax? <laughs> Unsatisfied by the Estates General and being locked out of the Estates General, members of the Third Estate form the National Assembly. One of the members was Maximilian Robespierre. Yeah, baby! The National Assembly's goal was to represent the people of France and not just the privileged minority. As the people of France struggled to put food on the table, it was looking inevitable for a revolt. By this point, there had already been 300 riots to pillage grain and bread. The king had ordered more forces to control the situation. Through all of this third estate torment, there was someone who was sympathetic to their needs. And that was Finance Minister Jacques Necker. Maybe we should tax the third estate a bit less and the first and second estate a bit more. Love it or leave it, Necker, you pinko commie! With Necker dismissed and troops amassing, the National Assembly formed the bourgeois militia. We're gonna need cockades to identify each other. What colour do you want? Green! We want green! Oh no, I've made a hundred thousand of these. I know. Green is the colour of the king's brother, you know. Ah, oh, boo, green! That guy sucks! That's just like my ex-wife. <laughs> Reminds me of my sex life! <laughs> they needed arms, so they went to the Hotel de Invalides. Where's the gunpowder? It got moved to the Bastille. So they continued to the Bastille. On the 14th of July, 1789, the Bastille was under the command of Bernard-René de Lornay. 
I wouldn't want to find myself imprisoned in the Bastille. Actually, we try and treat you okay here, and the majority of the 114 guards are here because they're injured. We certainly don't want any trouble. The crowd gathered and demanded the Bastille's cannons be withdrawn. Ah, who are all these grubby plebs? They demanded the release of the gunpowder. Delaney invited two people in to negotiate. However, the negotiations took too much time. Here's an update. That's just a blank piece of paper out of the printer. The crowd wasn't sure if the negotiators had been imprisoned. Some of the crowd climbed onto the roof and broke the chains for the drawbridge. Withdraw. Don't come in. I think he said go in. <laughs> Just like my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of my sex life. <laughs> <laughs> now we promise you, while these negotiations are happening, we will not fire on your people. Sir, they've broken through. Ah, stuff them, fire! Shots were exchanged. The crowd turned into a mob. By 3pm, the mob was joined by French soldiers who had technically mutinied. They also brought two cannons. With limited food and drink supplies, Delaunay sent the attackers a proposal. We'll surrender, but if you don't let us go unharmed, we'll blow up the powder stocks. That deal sucks! Ah oh, damn, that was my best idea. Delaunay was dragged out onto the street. Ah, ah. He was stabbed repeatedly. Ah, let me die! His head was cut off and put on a pike. Just like my ex-wife! <laughs> Reminds me of my sex life! <laughs> About a thousand people attacked the Bastille and 114 tried to defend it. 108 attackers were killed and 73 wounded. One defender was killed and 113 captured. About eight of them were killed after the surrender. The Bastille prisoners were released. There were seven inmates, which consisted of a man who tried to assassinate Louis XV. <laughs> and I'd do it again. He died ages ago! Four forgers, a deviant, and an Irish-born lunatic. Bah! The king heard of the attack the next morning on the 15th of July from the Duke of La Rochefoucauld. What's that noise out there? Is it a revolt? No, sir. It's a revolution. Oh. Is there any more chocky cake left? The Bastille was demolished within five months. And the revolution didn't stop there. Loads more happened. But this video is about the storming of the Bastille. So we're stopping it there. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you're one of our patrons, thank you for helping us produce this video. We've also put together a bit of a merch shop. So if you want to support the channel and look really snazzy at the same time, there's that option as well. Please share the video with all your friends, family, and anyone you meet. Uh, thanks very much. Cheers.